people of the internet, my name is Johnny and welcome to the final countdown. Only a few days separate us and the next FNAF game, FNAF Security Breach. Man, after over two years at this point, it's finally gonna be here. The next FNAF game, after such a long time of waiting, we're gonna have it in the next couple of days. It's absolutely crazy to think about, and I still have so many videos to pump out. I haven't decided if I'm gonna wait and only do security breach videos and then go back to FNAF news, because I'm still kind of keeping up. I still gotta talk about the ultimate guide, just overall FNAF news, the new Fazbear Fright books, and I also have a few more videos that I do want to release before the game comes out. So if the 16th or like the 17th, 18th, sometime during that time period you see some videos that aren't security breach i'm just trying to pump out as many videos as i can so i can get right to security breach don't worry i'm still gonna be hopefully doing daily uploads on it because it's a huge game and we gotta get right into playing it but just don't be alarmed if you see a few non-security breach videos during that time so with that out of the way what are we talking about today well playstation just made a brand new blog post talking about the game they just tweeted out childhood arcades and teenage jobs helped shape the authentic look of Five Nights at Freddy's Security Breaches Freddy Fazbear's Mega Pizzaplex. And then they have four images. The first one is of this gigantic hallway, let's say, that we all are calling the museum. Or at least that's what we think this area of the Pizzaplex is going to be, sort of a museum exhibit. Because in the trailer, as we're walking past Glamrock Chica's green room, we see cases, and inside those cases are previous items from the past games, like Carl the Cupcake. And you can see this is the exact same hallway, because you can see Freddy, Roxy, Monty, and Chica's green rooms, as well as the golden statues of the characters in front of their own green rooms, and you can also see the glass glass cases. It's hard to make out what exactly are in the cases, but in this new shot of this hallway of the museum, there are two things that stick out to me. Number one, in the bottom right hand corner, you can see three posters on the wall. And they are the Celebrate poster from FNAF 1, Bonnie's poster from FNAF 1 that's in the right hallway, and then also the Let's Party Freddy Fazbear poster that is in the left hall corner. So there are some more items from past games that are coming back into Security Breach, into this museum-like environment. Makes you really wonder, what other artifacts are we going to see? We know we have Fredbear Family Diner posters, and we know from Steel Wolf's interview with Daco that did happen, and I do still need to make a summary video about all of that. That's coming soon, I promise. We do know that we are going to learn more about Fazbear Entertainment's past. But anyways, the second thing is the Captain Foxy pirate ship, the cardboard cutout from Help Wanted. Now, what I find interesting is it looks like it has its own area. I don't know if it's a stage, and we are going to see a Foxy or Captain Foxy little animatronic on that stage, or if it's just a little platform to have the cutout on. I'm not sure. But anyways, moving on to the second image, we have Gregory playing some mini golf or some putt-putt at Monty's Gator Golf. We're going to learn more about these images in the blog post, so I'm not going to spend too much time on them right now. The third image is a concept drawing of the map for Roxy's Raceway, which as you can see is just absolutely massive. And this is only one room in the Pizzaplex. So you can see they have a garage, a crash demo area, you have a registration info area, some bumper carts as well. And then the fourth image is the Gator Golf Lobby. This is the lobby or waiting area to go into the actual golf course. And I'm pretty sure we've seen the lobby area already in a teaser or in a trailer. And so now let's take a look at the blog itself. So this is the brand new blog post. It's called A Backstage Tour of Freddy Fazbear's Mega Pizzaplex in FNAF Security Breach. The story of the real-life inspirations that shaped the location's design. And this is by Jason Toplowski, aka JTOP. He works at Steel Wool Studios. As you can see, he is the creative director. When the Steel Wool development team was given the opportunity to work on FNAF Security Breach, we dug deep for inspiration from our childhoods, high school jobs, and parental party planning duties to build the most 
most fantastic pizzeria to ever exist. We decided the best course of action was to begin with the star and center figure of this particular pizzeria, Glamrock Freddy. Everything in the Mega Pizza Plex revolves around Freddy and the new Glamrock band. Just like the original game, Freddy deserved a main stage surrounded by pizza and party tables filled with fans. However, this new stage of the art animatronic band would need even more room to move and perform. We decided to add elaborate stage lifts to raise Freddy and the gang above the audience flanked by stadium-sized concert monitors. The stage would be as updated as they are. And then they show off some concept art for the main stage. Which, as you can see and as we saw in the trailer, actually a few of the trailers, it does lift the animatronics up. And you can see in that third panel, the giant concert monitor that they talked about in the blog. Now that we had a concert venue as the centerpiece, we needed to surround it with activities and attractions of every type. We wanted a putt-putt golf course, go-karts, laser tag, retro arcades, modern arcades, dance floors, a movie theater, everything. However, FNAF is not a series about set design. It's about horrific animatronic stars. So, we decided to design a character-specific attraction for each member of the band. Due to the ongoing adventures of Freddy in space, we immediately went to work on Glamrock Freddy's Phaser Blast laser game. It was the first set mock-up completed in the entire game. Not only did we want to honor the source material, but we really wanted to include solid references to Scott's super fun side-scrollers. So it seems that, Freddy in Space was kind of the inspiration behind Glamrock Freddy's Phaser Blast Arena. And we might even see some references to Freddy in Space in the game, in the Phaser Blast Arena. That would be awesome. Everyone in the studio looked at Roxanne Wolf and just knew she was meant to be a racer. She would become the brutally competitive go-kart champion of Roxy Racers. The art team had a blast making her a trophy-winning daredevil in the raceway surrounding art. Not only was the location heavily inspired by Roxy's rebellious look, the raceway art then informed her elitist personality and VO performance. She is the best, and she will let the losers know it. I love that line. And once again, the concept drawing of Roxy's raceway. I am so unbelievably excited to race around this track. I really hope we can. We know we can drive vehicles. That was in a previous blog post. So I really hope at some point in the game, we race Roxanne. That would be freaking incredible. Montgomery Gator inspired the Monty's Gator Golf Indoor Putt-Putt Golf Course. Toxic barrels of brightly colored ball pit balls flow through a blacklight course of wooden shacks. Water hazards and rock and roll iconography. We wanted Monty's to have arguably the worst hazards of any course ever. Have you ever tried golfing while surrounded by ball pits? And again, the concept art of Gregory Plain playing mini golf in the golf course, surrounded by, again, a bunch of ball pits. And once again, the Gator Golf Lobby. We've already talked about this. We've also already seen it. Finally, we had to put ourselves in the mindset of Fazbear Entertainment. What do they want? What are they really after? Does anyone know for sure? What we do know is that they want to squeeze as much money as possible from every Visitor. We looked at a lot of real-world references to develop a Fazbear-appropriate list of money-making schemes throughout the building. And I find this to be probably the most interesting part of the of the whole blog. The Mega Pizzaplex has very personal ties to me. I was a child of the 80s in Tacoma, Washington, where I grew up hiding from the rain in movie theaters, bowling alleys, arcade, and indoor malls. There were also several quirky pizzerias and fun centers in the area. As a teen, I became an usher slash projectionist at my local multiplex. All of the client-facing areas were flashy, shiny, neon, and impressive. However, if you go behind the scenes like I did, then you witness the disgusting underbelly where the teen work staff 
lives. Walking in filthy concession stands, cleaning bathrooms, storing boxes of soda syrup in chain link storage pens, hydraulically compacting stacks of cardboard and garbage bags, and sweeping piles of oily popcorn behind movie screens during busy weekends are some of the best real world experiences I could have had to prepare for this project. And then they have a reference image of the Tacoma Washington pizza in pipes burning down in 1999, as well as what looks to be scrapped arcade cabinets. The caption says reference arcade maintenance, picture courtesy of Ruckus Room from Bellingham, Washington. This is the final paragraph, the insider knowledge, the importance of carpet. My brother, Colin, owns an arcade called the Ruckus Room in Bellingham, Washington. Throughout the development of the game, he was a great source of insider industry information on the actual family fun centers, especially while all the fun centers were closed during COVID. He told us all about the importance of decorative carpet tiles. Apparently, new carpet designs are one of the hottest items at family fun center conventions. Armed with that knowledge, we knew that the Mega Pizzaplex had to have the best carpet squares in the world. So, if you look closely, every themed area has multiple personalized Fazbear carpet designs, and various colors and imagery which reflects the theme of the zone. And I do believe we've seen this, especially in Monty's Gator Golf Arena. And here is the reference image that they supply from Ruckus Room. They end off the post saying there is certainly more to discuss about the design of the building than we can cover in one blog post. You are going to have to experience the Mega Pizzaplex yourself to truly understand the the scope of the building. And that's the thing I'm probably most looking forward to, exploring the Mega Pizzaplex, because it's freaking huge. So that is going to do it. That was a pretty lengthy blog post, but also one that I thought was very interesting. So I thought I'd make a quick, quick video out of it and share the information and the concept images and kind of the behind the scenes of everything with you guys. So that's going to do it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. I honestly cannot wait any longer for Security Breach. It comes out so soon. Subscribe to the channel so you don't miss me playing through the entire game, finding all the secrets, and I'll see you all on the flip side. Goodbye.